we did a chat about making the most of yourself. This time we are chatting about looking after yourself the sporty way. Today we have three professionals who certainly know how to keep fit. We have a yoga expert, Annette Shine, fitness trainer and uh, champion skier, Anya Bolbier, and golfing professional, Jody September. Apart from actually rushing about, running here, there and everywhere, I don't actually do a great deal of sport, shame on me. But coming straight to you, Annette, about yoga. For those who really don't know much about yoga, you'd like to explain it and what's the importance of yoga. Um, yoga started in India 5,000 years ago and was not physical at its time. It was more into the mind and the spirit. And then they invented these postures, now known as uh, asanas, postures, physical postures you can do from any age, from child until the end of your life. And it's postures that respect your body and will heal all the internal systems, the glands, and will balance your whole body and make you globally fit. And it's certainly quite different. Let's move over to Anya, because you run fitness boot camps, which is it sounds like the more energetic side of yoga. Would you like to tell us more about what you do in your boot camps? Well, I guess it's a different temperament, no, atmosphere in, in a boot camp. It's, it is very energetic and, and high intensity. But, um, but it's, it's about uh, feeling good as well. It's, it's not as many people think about being skinny or having a certain look. It sounds it's, so much like hard work though. Is it, is it very rigorous what you do in the boot camps? Well, it is. We, if we want to keep a high intensity because when, when in life do you get out there and, and get a chance to, to sprint, for example, in, in regular life? And that's, that's what our bodies are meant for, meant to be used. In a, yeah. Coming back to, to Jody as a golfing professional, now we think, well, it's just about a little ball, getting a stick and just putting, you know, getting that little ball into the hole. But you must have to keep fit, because there's quite a lot that goes on a course, to get around a course. What's involved in, in doing that? Yeah, I mean, it is absolutely just a stick and ball game that's developed over 700 years into this incredibly technical game. And you do need to be fit to play golf. Take, for example, Monte Carlo Golf Club, which is 800 metres above sea level. And very, very hilly, and it's harder to get catch your breath up there. So it takes a lot more out of you when you're when you're finished playing there. You know, you really notice it as as you know up a mountain. It's much it's much more tiring, isn't it, when you're, when you're working out? So, so what sort of preparations would you do if you were playing a round of golf? What what would you have to do? Well, I mean, more than you could call it an endurance sport. But what you really have to do before you ever step on a golf course and pick up a club because you're swinging a club which weighs 400 grams no. and you're going to swing that um, you know you're going to swing it 300 times in a day and you're trying to take 72 shots so you would have to be warmed up you'd have to be your whole body would need you need a body scan so that all your muscles are fired up and ready to go so that you don't stretch or pull a muscle or put your back back out so is something like yoga good for preparation for, for playing golf? Absolutely. Would work hand in hand with golf. What do you say about that? I, guess then I, I confirm I have also people who come to yoga for, for improving their golf and remaining in shape. And when they go on holiday, they do yoga. And when they come back to the game, they haven't lost anything. But before you run these uh, fitness boot camps, you were a champion Olympic skier. I mean, that, that's quite incredible. You've got to be fit for something like that, surely. So what would you have done before, uh, before you go skiing, really? Because the amount of... Well, it's a, a lot of time spent in the gym, uh, working both to prepare yourself uh, to be physically strong and uh, fast, but it's also about injury prevention. And in the sport I've been doing, which is, it's pretty tough on the body, and I've, I've had a lot of injuries, so you get put back to square one many times and you've got to work your way up again. And uh, So yeah, it's a lot of hours spent in the, in the fitness room. With yoga, how can you introduce people to doing yoga? Is it they've got to want to do it or is it something that you should encourage somebody to do when they're quite I young? I think you should definitely try, and not only try one class, which should definitely try at least three different ones, three different teachers. 
because everyone is so different, it is up to the personality of the teacher who will either make it for you or not. So you have to find a personality that who you can feel similarity, so you can so you will enjoy it. Is it something that you do by yourself, or is it better to do it in a class? You can do it by yourself, and in the beginning, it's good to have instruction from an instructor to do it. And uh, <coughs> many people don't dare to come to yoga because they think they have to be flexible to come to class. And uh, there's even in, been in many classes called yoga for stiffies because people think, no. oh, I, I can't do yoga because I'm too stiff. So <laughs> I said, no, that's not. We, there's no competition, as I can see the difference between golf and and uh, and the fitness side. There is there's no competition in yoga. You just come along and do the best you can. And we start today with the body you have today, with the possibility you have today. And we start from here in a, in a, in a good atmosphere. In a so with yoga, it's about having a healthy mind as well, though, isn't it? Yes, and not uh, be so hard on yourself. Be more acceptance of yourself, where you are today. Not hate yourself if you can't do it. Still love yourself, anyway. And going back to the, the fitness boot camps, um, again, we talked before about introducing children into to, to sports. And they're more motivated because I think, like we mentioned before, the, that that happy drug that you, you release when you're doing energetic sports. Is that something we should be sort of helping with children to do? I think it's it's uh, almost our duty to provide the opportunity for the children to go out and and, and choose an activity because uh, if if you don't get it as a child, it's so hard to get it later. And that's what I see with a lot of the women I work with. They've been told, be quiet, don't move, uh, you're hopeless, don't, you can't catch a ball. And, and then they just think that exercise is not for them. With yoga and with uh, sports in general, you, you get in a zone where you you push yourself to, to, to see where your limits are. And, and that way you push your limits. And you can do more. And, you, and that, essentially that's what makes you feel good is when you can do more, when you improve. Right? And build up your self-confidence. Yeah, yeah for sure. That you build up That's a really, really yes, big yes, part yes, of yes. it. I mean, you injured yourself as a skier. Can you injure yourself playing golf? Absolutely, of course you can, yeah. I mean, uh, golf, most golfers complain of back trouble, generally. Most golfers I know, I, I've had back trouble. I thought it was supposed to be a healthy sport. <laughs> 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 it should have been healthy. You can help yourself with, uh, uh, with fitness training then. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have a really good physiotherapist who, who looks after me as well. So he gives me a checkup. Um, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people um, don't acknowledge that they have a back problem. And, um, it and, gets what and a lot of people don't know that they can actually change, that it's not as. as uh, yeah, not a chronic mm -hmm. thing, but that you can actually work your way out of, of different pains and aches. You don't have to accept every ache and say, well, it's just going to be like this for life. It's amazing what you can change with, with physical training. Yes, yeah. yeah. and I, that, I like totally it. agree with you. I mean, if, if i had done yoga since I was, say, 18, I'd probably have no back trouble at all because my core muscles would be stronger. Yeah, yeah, I'd have, have more flexibility. But can but you never take like off? It's never too late. Like off, you, you're bound to get muscular imbalances because it's not a symmetrical sport. Exactly. So you can counterbalance those imbalances yeah. <laughs> with exercise. Mm. Exactly. But can you injure yourself with yoga though, Annette? You can also, if you, if you like to push yourself and be able to do the posture you did last year, and, and you want to do it now because you could do it last year, then you go beyond your limits and you, you can pull a muscle. That's when, you, sure. when you say beyond limits, is it an age thing? Or no, it's not an age thing. The body changes physiologically with time. And uh, we have diff there's many different yoga styles and very dynamic athletic yoga styles that you can do when you're younger. When you try to do them later on, it doesn't work. And if you like to push yourself and be able to do to try to do what you, you could do uh, 10 years ago, you, you can't you're bound, do it. You, you're bound to, to injure yourself if you push yourself too far. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much to Anya, Jodie, and to Annette. Thank you. Keep fit and healthy.